Live. Hey everybody, I'm David. It's John John the Wise. Cyberpunk Red came out. <laughs> oh my god, Armor Guard. <laughs> it's happening. It's finally happening. Like, okay. I remember when they were starting to announce that like Cyberpunk 2077 was gonna be a thing, and I was like, hmm. And then you started seeing some rumblings from Artel Sori, and I was like, oh, <laughs> I know, man. And it was, I felt, honestly, I felt bad because we've had the rules since, what is it, like June? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I could see like a dip in people because they were like, dude, just get the shit out of my face. You're rubbing it in my face. I know, I know. Well, so it's funny. I just funny, felt so bad. Like the rules that we had, just so you all know, like we had um, parts of the book chopped up and like, put out there in weird orders. There was no art, of course, right? And so it was like, where's this thing? I don't know. It's normally in the beginning of the 2020 book, right? And the 2013 book. Yeah. Isn't it? It's at the end. <laughs> yeah. But and and all the layout too, like the cool fonts and like, hey, pay attention to this. This is an important rule. None of that stuff was there. Yeah. It was just like info dump. That's all it was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean it was so, yeah. It worked, obviously, right? It worked. It yeah, worked really of well. Course. But... I was but, grateful. Yeah. I'm not complaining. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what's funny is, uh, so, you know, folks, we obviously got the advanced copy, and it was like a really early version, right? Um, and then, like, I think they started circulating the, the, um, what is the the version right before they sent it to print with all the ads and and all that kind of stuff, right? That was starting to yeah. go around. Well, yeah. I didn't know that it existed. I was just sitting there like plugging away with the old doc and people started coming at me like, Hey, I found your Easter egg. And like Patrick Canoes, who's over on the other stream right now, Patrick mm -hmm. was like, Hey, I found your stream and, or your, your call out. And I was like, Oh dude, that's cool. And I looked for it in mine and I was like, I don't see it. What are you talking about? Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> uh, they, they must've forgot to send it to you. Dude. No, dude, it's all good. It's all good. Like <laughs> it was just, it was just funny. Like for anybody who doesn't know Patrick Canoes, who's over on the other stream. I, I love him to tiny pieces. He and I go way back. He's been in the mm -hmm. the High Shelf Gaming podcast for a long time. He's been on your show. Um, and I think it's just kind of like an odd coincidence that we're both running streams at the same time. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it happens. Today's the day to do it, right? I mean, like, the rules just came out, right? There's so much content to go over. There's so many cool things going on. And, of course, we're going to be doing from the screen sheets where we're talking about the community for a mm -hmm. bit. And then I don't think we can really help ourselves. We're just going to get straight into the game, right? Yeah, like our usual format, guys, is we have so many things in this Discord, which, by the way, you guys should be joining our Discord community. The link will get it to you guys in chat. It'll be in the description below if you're watching the VOD. But this Discord community that we started, it was just so we can get people together to help them find games, prop up other content creators, and just make an actual like community. Yes. And it's turned into this amazing resource for Cyberpunk Game Masters with plots and and uh npcs tokens i mean you name it Dude. if 
Yeah, it's like it's like the community resource right now. Um, exactly. So David had the idea. He said, "Hey, why don't we get together and like showcase some of the things that people have done?" And I was like, "Oh my god, yeah, that's such a good idea." So that was what the first episode was about. That's what this episode was supposed to be about, but I mean, Cyberpunk Red came out. Yeah. And David and I have been playing it for these past few months, and for all you guys, this is your first time getting involved in it. So I'm sure you have so many questions. There's so many things. You just want to eat up everything there is about it. And we've been dying to talk about it. Yes. Yes. So, so if we have a camera in front of us and a microphone and someone's willing to listen, we're, we're ready to talk, dude. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And so, folks, like we have we do want to talk a little bit about the community real quick, um, but obviously hit us up with those questions. Right. Yeah. Toss yeah. your questions into the chat and we will we will dogpile those questions and we just can't wait to show you red. I've got the book ready to pull up. We can call out specific rules and all that kind of stuff. Show you specific things, that kind of thing. Um, and I also have a little present to give to the chat. Mm. A little thing I told, I told, I told a couple of people that we were doing this. I'm very excited about it. Um, big props to the high shelf gaming community. We have a couple of members that fancy themselves, uh, coders and that kind of thing. And they made a roll 20 character sheet for cyberpunk red using the full rules so at the end That's of correct. this i'll be handing out links for you all to grab it it's the straight code it's not something you can select in roll 20 yet they have not uh they're likely not to approve this one because we actually have a second one that we're working on uh so <laughs> so this one that we have is like bare bones it's like the raw skills and all that kind of stuff uh we'll be handing that out on the stream today this is boom the announcement that we're giving this to you all right now Right. Nobody yeah. knew we were doing this They're like, ha ha, surprise, you get a world 20 character sheet today. Um, <laughs> and uh, we are working on another sheet that has even more features and it like calls in the stuff from the roles and lets you do the point assignments and all that cool stuff that you can do in the book. All of that is going to be in the second sheet. So this first sheet, yeah. bare bones, lets you roll dice, lets you pick your skills and all that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, Katrina in chat, Katrina. Thank you. Take a bow. This sheet is from you, and it is awesome. You got the art together. You got all the stuff together. Just huge effort, huge uh, output from you. Thank you so much. And um, and the next sheet is a kind of a collaboration between Katrina and uh, uh, Mike, who plays Dexy in our game. So Katrina, she plays Dr. Violet, and Mike plays uh, Dexy, and the two of them are making Roll20 character sheets so that we can all get something right something to play yeah. with almost as soon as possible yeah i mean that's what i'm so excited about first of all thank you guys so much for doing that thank you for being a part of the community and that's like such the amazing magical part of all this is we went from like a niche game to it being front and center everybody's like talking about it yeah and so we get to see all these like development tools and resources just coming out of the woodwork yeah. And I think that's partially why we wanted to do this show about our Discord because we didn't make the Discord it, it with the with the intent to like be curators of resources and stuff like that. That just happened organically. Yeah. Just people being awesome getting together saying, "Hey, I want to do this thing." And we're like, "Uh, here's a channel for you. Go go put that resource there." And yeah. then people are like, "Oh, I have this resource. I have this resource. Like there's the there's a guy making uh campaign managers, there's guys making like maps and people making character sheets galore and all kinds of cool tools and GM guides and random tables for things and like it's just yeah. a really great place." <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it it starts from like someone saying, "Hey, does anybody have a battle map?" and then it ends with, "Hey, how do you make battle maps?" and right. like people are suggesting to each other how to make it, what programs. Yeah. Here's some free assets, like Yeah. It's amazing, dude. Yeah. It's amazing. It's so good. It's so good. I know. Um so I um should we get into the MVCs? I almost want to like race right to the let's talk cyberpunk red stuff. Yeah, yeah. Let's do MVCs. Get it out of the way because we have to do the MVCs. Yes. Yes. And because we want to uplift the community and give the spotlight to some of the people that are part of it. Yep. And then we're just going to go straight into cyberpunk red, guys. We're just going to go talk about it head to toe, yep. what we like, what you like, any questions. We got answers and uh let's do it so yeah. do you want to start with yours first yeah i'll do mine and then you do one do you have two because i i have two we can, uh, we can do have, one each 
I have two. Uh, I have one, but then the other one is the one I told you about yeah, from. Okay, yeah, cool, yeah. So, cool, cool, so cool. it's all two. Right. Yeah, all right. So I'll do one, and then you, and then you go. All right. So okay. <laughs> this is how we plan, folks. Live on camera. That's how we do it. All right. <laughs> we'll do it live. <laughs> That's right. Um, so for me, uh, my guy is a uh, cyberpunk, which is F Y B E R punk. This dude um, actually was a, a really good suggestion from another mod in the community, um, uh, Azela, who was our previous and uh, most valuable Chumba. Chumba. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Fiberpunk is awesome. Uh, if y'all don't see him in the Discord, please join the Discord. He's got really good comments, really good help. Right? People come in and ask questions. He's got good insights. He asks really good questions too. Um, yeah. Just all around helpful dude. Fast with the links, fast with the help. Um, yeah. And that kind of stuff is just like good community health, right? Like that's the deal is communities survive on having really good people and being able to like help one another. And Fiberpunk has kind of a recent add to the community, I think, um, but has really been awesome throughout and it's just it's just really great so cyberpunk dude if you're listening or you watch this later on thanks a ton for being a part of the community and just being your awesome self and helpful to people with your input man yeah 100 percent. i agree with everything david has to say about cyberpunk he's also ran like play by post games in the discord yes. and he's also just you know we there's no prerequisite to joining our community and we don't tell people that you have to help anyone we don't say anything like that. So anybody that does that stuff does it out of the kindness of their heart. And he's one of those people. So yeah. big up to you, Fiberpunk. Oh, check in the chat here real quick. Lord Sin, someone who also has a Discord server full of creatives. Yeah, man, you get it, right? You get the deal is that like you have to you have to foster creativity, you have to support it. Um, and it takes a it takes the right community for creatives to feel like they can have a place, right? And that their yeah. stuff is gonna be celebrated instead of like ridiculed right exactly because like we exactly. all we all make stuff and our stuff is imperfect right and you want people to give you the constructive criticism but still like celebrate how awesome your efforts are right and so yeah yeah you get it man yeah 100 percent. all right so my choice for mvc his name is god in in our discord yeah. his name is actually tavner in his own discord yeah which happens to be an affiliated Discord of ours. It's our first affiliate Discord. Well, obviously, other than Talsorian's official one. Sure. This is like the first one from other people. And the reason I chose God or Tavner is because, first of all, he was a player in my Cyberpunk on the spot game. And he was a great player, very respectful, just someone that you would love to have at your table. Yeah. And then on top of that, he messaged me later and said, hey, I have this Discord with my buddies. And we like play on a weekly basis and we make it happen. We have one shots and people could just jump in and out. Would it be cool if I advertise that? Yeah. And I said, dude, I'll go beyond. Like I'll make you an affiliated server so people know like if they need to go to other servers to find games, it'll be yours. Right. And and he's taken that and that responsibility and people like flood into his discord and he's been able to give people games and be an awesome part of the community. So yeah big up to you dude mad, yeah. mad respect yeah exactly and yeah all all who all who wander you've got a great comment in chat here like wait this is cyberpunk aren't corpse you supposed to like crush the competition so <laughs> we've been talking about this john john and i've been talking about this like oh i'm so sorry um no it's fine cyberpunk is a game about a terrible world right and we as people are like i want to play in a game full of like jerks <laughs> <laughs> and, and bad people right and bad situations that's fun for me is being in a dystopian future um but there's kind of this end result of the people who do that tend to be really nice <laughs> yeah. and really nice to each other and it's like yeah man i'm struggling like you're struggling and let's let's support each other let's let's boost each other so there's a lot of that kind of vibe and i i just love it you know yeah i mean like our intentions from the beginning we're always to uplift the community, grow and help people find games, help people with their games. So if somebody's out here saying like, hey, I help people find games, can you like put the signal out? Yeah. It's like, yeah, that was one of our original core principles. Of course, yeah. that's what we're going to do, you know? Yeah. 
Yes, yeah. and, and nice people can make great antagonists. Absolutely. It's like, <laughs> man, we're competing. You're really nice. I gotta, I still got to burn you to the ground. <laughs> oh, man. In cyberpunk, of course. That's of course. the most cyberpunk <laughs> thing in the world, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So who's your second? I, I think I know exactly who your second is. All right. My second one, and I don't know if he's in chat or not. Sometimes I know he likes to lurk around. Yeah. But this person is the biggest part of the cyberpunk community in my opinion and that is jay gray from artel saurian games and yes. i think it's fitting that we choose him as the most valuable chumba yes. because i've seen from these last few years how hard he's worked how much he's given for the community and how much he's been available to anybody out there i mean anybody can message him and get some kind of answer yeah. an official answer from artel saurian games yeah. from him yeah. so i mean I could just go on and on. He's done so much for me and my channel and supported all of us, both of us, us and David. Yeah. And uh, he's going to continue to do it because he's just that kind of person. So I wanted to make sure that we got that out there, that he's in the Hall of Fame of the most valuable Chumbas yes. be right when Cyberpunk Red has come out. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And you know, uh, I think he is probably the reason why there are so many creatives doing this because the love that he puts out... I, you guys don't maybe um, – this may be peeling back the curtain a little bit. When you start making content for Cyberpunk Red, if you reach out to Jay Gray and say, hey, I'm making content, he's like, awesome. I want to add you to the website. Mm -hmm. I want to retweet you. I want to support you. Folks, other game companies don't do that. And I have to add, sorry to interject, he doesn't care about your view count. He doesn't care about any of that. If you care about the game and you want to do good for the community, yes. he'll back you up no matter what. Yeah, he is um, like, oh man, I remember like uh, we, we were started, I want to say two years ago. I think it was like 2019, 2018, we were playing our first 2020 game. That dude like grabbed video snips from our stuff and made like a promotional video for little old HSG. I swear to you, we had like 20 followers, right? I mean, we were nothing. And he messaged me, he's like, hey, why didn't you tell me you were starting a game? I was like, I'm shy. I don't, you know, I I just yeah. want to make content. I don't, I'm not ready. I and, don't want to bother you. Yeah, you're, exactly. You're a busy guy. Exactly. <laughs> and he was like, no, I'm going to make a promo video for you. He's like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> He's yeah, an amazing and, person. And it's I'm not so I don't know I don't know 100% if this is true, but this is just speculation on my part and maybe uh if you guys don't know already, but David and I both of us have easter eggs in the book. Yeah. And Jay Gray's in charge of the layout. Yeah. Uh, of the book, he's done the layout. I'm sure that he has something to do with both of us yeah. being immortalized in the book, dude. <laughs> dude, like how amazing was that? Like I I got <sighs> choked up right like um patrick canoes told me about it right and then yeah he told me too yeah, yeah. dude that guy found all that stuff and <laughs> then the and then and then i was and then we got on with um we got the book you know me and the players were looking over it and i was like hey i think there's an easter egg for us i haven't seen it yet but i heard that it's in there and like katrina was like boom page whatever and i was like whoa whoa it's yeah. right there right there yeah and dude fun story about that the tag right next to the high shelf gaming tag is food trucks Mm -hmm. little secret jay gray and i wax poetic about the gen con food trucks every year in private chat like oh. hey have you seen the pierogi food truck this year oh yeah there's this like you know pulled pork sandwich food truck and so like he and i bond over food <laughs> yeah so it's guaranteed so then it's confirmed that it was it was his doing that's why he's yeah. the most valuable chumba <laughs> yes because <laughs> he put us in the freaking book dude yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and it's so, it's so lore friendly too because it's in the garden, which is like Ziggurat's like uh, I don't know Reddit, Reddit, thing. Facebook, yeah. whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So it's like, oh, there I am. I mean, I showed people in my family that don't even know, and they're like, all of a sudden, they're like, wait, so wait, what do you do? Why are you in this book? <laughs> they all of a sudden care. Yeah, yeah, they thought I was just like doing dumb stuff at home in front of a camera, but then they're like, wait, you're in a book. Yes. It's like suddenly I'm validated. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That that is absolutely something you can show dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be 100%. like, no, really, this is not just a, a thing. This is a real thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh so God. so big, big respect to Jay Gray for everything he's done for the community. I mean, there yeah. we I could talk on and on about him. And we'll have him on our podcast and you guys will see him more. Oh yeah. So there it is. Yeah. Yeah. All right. 
So, hit the book. Let's hit the book, baby. All right, Let's guys. Let's Cyberpunk Red Time, ladies and gentlemen. Let's talk about Cyberpunk Red. Oh my god. So I have this All is right. the real book. I'm I'm totally prepared folks to just like zip around and show stuff and talk yeah. stuff. Like let's just let's just do this. Um so what what roles are in your game, John John? So in my game, we have a solo that doesn't use guns. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah. He he he's like my rules lawyer interesting guy. He loves doing stuff like that. So he's a solo that doesn't use guns. A nomad, a rocker boy who's just nuts, and um, a net runner. Those are my four. That's solid. That's a solid. It's crew. a it's a solid crew, dude. Yeah, they got it all. So, all right, the rocker boy, cool. We should maybe look, talk a little bit about the rocker boy. The the nomad, dude. I know. I know. I, I honestly change... want to talk about the nomad a lot. Can we can we just go straight to nomad then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk All about right. the nomad right. because right. how the significance of nomads in the in the time of the red it has to be talked about because no longer are they just like this fringe part of society. If it wasn't for them, then it would have been all over. Yeah, it, it would have been completely over after after the fourth corporate war. Yeah, because who moves your food? Nomads. Yeah, and <laughs> you know what? Yeah, Simon, Simon from uh, Wandering DM, Simon, I had him on my podcast recently, and yeah. he said like one of the most profound things. He said, no, cyberpunk is like 1159 on the doom clock, and the nomads know that it's 1159. They know that there's only one minute left. Right. And and the rest of the world is living this illusion with like Lizzy Wizzy, Chrome, and cyberware, and and fashion and style over substance. Yeah. And the nomads are out here like you guys are living a false life. Right. Everything can be taken from you in an instant. It had already happened to us. Yeah. And that's why we're not letting anybody tell us how to live our life. And, we're going to take control of things. And you know like so all right. I'm I'm from like rural Texas. Like rural and suburban and then I eventually moved into Dallas and and now I'm in like the East Coast. Mhm. Mm Rule America, folks, has like this thing where it's like, hey, when society collapses, just so you all know, cities only have like a day or two's worth of food. Yeah. Right. And so everybody's going to come to us. We're going to be the ones to catch the urban horde. Right. In Cyberpunk Red, it's even like worse because the Rule America was all hollowed out by like, by like, uh, biotechnica and all that kind of stuff. They like bought up all the farmland and nobody lived in rural anything. It was just agriculture, just automated agriculture, right? So then cities are collapsing and Nomad's like, okay, 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 okay. We're going to go out and get all this food and we're going to bring it to you and you're all going to live, yeah. you know, yeah. and uh, you got to pay us, but we're going to, we're all going to live. Here's a really cool thing about the book. Um, they got all these like little like call outs to everything else. Everything in the book is a link. Everything's a link, folks. So just yeah. go there. And um, jump down to duh, duh, duh. okay, the nomads like get this moto ability. It is like one; they're the best drivers in the world. Yeah, and that comes from the Neo Tribes book, the old twenty twenty Neo Tribes book. There was like a sub role of the nomads that were great drivers, and that was it. And in here, they're like, "Ah, hey, we're gonna make them great drivers. Just all nomads are great drivers. Done, right?" And then they get this, like, huge pool of, like, vehicles to pull in, and then they can, like, augment the vehicles using their their special ability to just get their vehicle augmented or get more vehicles. And it's one of those things that, like, as you as a nomad get more powerful, it suggests that your family is getting more powerful. Yeah. Because they're getting cooler cars with better mods like flamethrowers or extra armor or... Yeah whatever <laughs> flying vehicles yeah. all that stuff you know just really when i first when i first read about also the other thing i'd like to mention two things first is with the net crashing and the things what happened to the net and the rabbits being there yeah communication has pretty much fallen short of like you can only communicate within your city so if you want to get messages across state lines guess who you have to use nomads Right. Nomads are literally the post office for you. They're the snail mail. They get things across safely, packages, whatever you need. Yeah. So all of a sudden, they're more necessary than anything else. 
Oh, I wanted to talk about something. All Who Wander, you have a really good comment in here about nomads. Red never mentions sins or blanks. Does that mean that nomads can go to the hospitals, right? Because a lot of times the nomads were, were they didn't have a sin. They didn't have an identity number. Um, yeah. In Cyberpunk Red, they talk about public services, right? Mm -hmm. And there's only like two hospitals in Night City, and they're both unofficial as fuck. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. there's not clinics, a... <laughs> clinics are more like you're going to find clinics are everywhere. Clinics yeah. are and, and they'll yeah. accept anybody. They don't care yeah. about yeah. they just need the business, you know? Yeah. And I also wanted to mention when I looked at the Nomad, I originally was like, dude, that's it. You just get to work on your car. What about that whole thing about family from 2020? And then I realized, like, no, they're letting you know that that's baseline for all nomads right. to have family right. that's a part of their lore that's a part of their backstory it's not a special ability right it's it's who they are right so their special ability is the car stuff but right. being able to call their family members for favors and being a part of that hierarchy that's who they are already that yeah. doesn't need to be like a a, a skill and, and they get into it a little bit to say that like there's a bunch of different types of nomad families there are medical nomad families that run around chasing down cataclysms and are trying to be boots on the ground medical support whenever there's a, a disaster right yeah and then there's agricultural nomad families that you know follow the you know agriculture and then there's construction nomad families and delivery nomad families so there's a bunch of different types of families think of nomads as just straight up migrant work right yeah whatever like job a city needs if they don't have the local workforce, which they probably don't, they're already kind of at capacity, phone up some nomads, get a couple of families in here, and they show up with all this stuff, right? Yeah. It's just, a, it's just really good. It's it's so smart. Yeah, um, I love it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm glad that we kind of started with the nomads. Um, yeah. Let us... Somebody had mentioned the media. Oh, Do we want to... Yeah. Should we talk about media? I mean, we could. Dude. Dude, global yeah. influence? Yes, let's go to media. Um, yeah. I think media is like just up here just a little bit. Uh, operator, that's for um, the fixer. I think media yeah. is like next. Oh, lawman, yeah. Um, I'm sorry, so guys, media, to make you drive. One, 151 is the page for Boom. their stuff. Thank you, sir. You got it. Oh, not all the way to one. I want 151, kids. There we go. Um, yeah, media. Oh, here we go. T -t -t media. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so their goes. whole thing, their whole thing is rumors. Yes. And the really cool, like, uh, pizzazz thing that they have is th this bold text. When a media is actively looking for a rumor like this, they roll appropriate stat plus skill plus D10 against the DV of the active column the GM has set for the rumor based on how detailed it is. So the GM before the session starts or, or behind his screen secretly rolls to see how much of the rumor is possible. Like, is it possible for the, the media to find? And yeah. basically if you guys have a campaign and you guys need information, the media is the one that can obtain that information or spread rumors or, or try to get things going in the direction that you need it to. And is like an invaluable resource in your game. Yeah. Yeah. And this is one of those things that like, I know a lot of us play cyberpunk for the like combat aspects, but it's, it's probably worth noting that a lot of the roles are not combat roles. They're, they're revolutionary roles. They're like information brokers, like fixers. They are influencers like medias. They are straight up like, um, uh, mayhem instigators like rocker boys. I mean, like, there is kind of this sense of like you almost want one of these people to be in the group or near the group to like help give you the uh, goal of the group other than just get cash, right? Like yeah. what is it that they're fighting against or fighting for kind of thing? Um, yeah, yeah, what exactly. What truth are they trying to un uncover? All of that stuff. And sometimes, uh, not sometimes, a lot of the times problems are solved without bullets. And the media is one of those roles that gets things done without having to fire a shot, without having to put themselves in danger, innocent people in danger. They can yep. start a rumor, a substantial rumor that's big enough 
that the military will get involved, that local police will get involved, other edge runners, corporations, whatever. Yeah. They can, they can weave that, that web. Yeah. And the top end on that stuff is you're talking to world leaders, yeah. right? You're talking to like people who can make big, huge changes and you have their ear, right? I mean, like that's, um, that's huge. Yeah. Right. And I want to know like, okay, well, how is it that like one media who has a rank in 10 something, why don't they just like run roughshod over all this? It's like, because there's other medias, right? Yeah. There's other people competing for the same same access, right? So it's not like you just have it and nobody's like going to bump against you. Like, no, there's there's competition at all of these levels, right? So if you're yeah. the world's best media, well, there's another world's best media somewhere else and they're going to yeah. they're gonna fight you, you know? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely, a, a, I would call it an advanced role, a nuanced role. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, like a solo, it's straightforward, and there's some other ones that are straightforward. The media, the rocker boy, even the fixer, there's a lot of nuance to their role. Yeah. And that's what makes this game so amazing, is they have all aspects for everybody. Yeah. And the, um, I kind of feel like the media and the fixer and rocker boy, on like a level... I kind of feel like the me the fixer is really tight. Like mm -hmm. they are they're focused on a very specific scope. Yeah. Right. And they may be the fixer for the city. I mean, they may be top dog fixer, but like they're they're still like kind of tactical. They're still like in the street a lot of the time. Whereas like medias and rockers can almost very quickly get out of the street because of the the how big their audience can be and how big their scope can be. Um, yeah, exactly. So, so it kind of depends on like how big of a game you want to run. Like if you're going to run a, a gutter punk game that has a rocker boy or a media at some stage, that gutter punk crew is probably getting out of the gutter. Right. Cause these yep. guys, their influence just gets that big. Um, so just know that GMs as you're putting your crews together that like yeah. these guys are medium to high end access and adventure. Right, just because they they don't stay in the gutter for long. With their yeah, story. and because because the world of cyberpunk has so many like official channels of like they have official news channels, they have official um, rocker boys or whatever you want to call that are propped up by corporations. Yeah, because of that, the underground medias, the underground rocker boys, those are people that are sought after. We want the truth. When we're fed lies, we want the truth. So right. that that's like a great angle for a player to play those kind of characters is someone trying to grind it and trying to get the truth out to people. Yeah. Or what, what they think is the truth. <laughs> right. Yeah. And that's the other thing about this is that like you are trading credibility. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're dealing strictly in truth. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's a whole thing to consider is like perspective matters and all that kind of stuff. And that yeah. makes for interesting story and interesting conflict and you know, those, those great things. So you know, yeah, chase that. Exactly. Um, yeah. I, I do plan on making like a, I'm going to do a role breakdown for each one of these because I think they've changed so much since 2020 Yeah, in, in such a positive way that it totally. needs to be said. It needs to be broken down. Totally. Yeah. Agreed yeah. completely. Uh, and sorry to make you all just look at, look at a uh, text, but um, just, I just wanted to show <laughs> off like when you are top end media, you get <laughs> huge access and influence. Um, so yeah, all good stuff. Yeah, exactly. Uh, can we talk about uh, the AIs at page 263? Yes, please. So let me give you guys a little bit of insight on something that blew my mind when I started reading this book. So we all real, know... Real, real quick, I, I'm, uh, whenever I put it into the PDF, I'm one page behind you. But uh -oh. it lands me on, a weird, on an interesting thing. Drift nations, just so you all know, there are floating cities on the drift mm -hmm. out in the ocean. The deep down, just so you all know, there are cities under under the surface of the ocean, right? Yep. A lot of people don't, like, play with those. Then there's the high riders, the guys up in space, right? So just, they they update you on all this stuff, okay? And uh, those are things that you can have in your game. People from those places are, are wild and crazy. But yes, the AIs. Thank you, John, yeah. for bringing us here. Yeah, no, and to touch on that, it's like the world is so screwed over that wherever you can play, call a place home you'll call it home, whether it's in space or underground or whatever it is. Technology has allowed us to be able to live in all these different places. So it's like, we'll call home wherever we're safe. 
Yeah. You know? Yeah. So yeah, I wanted to talk about AIs, but first, before we set this up, the so we all know that the net has gone all screwy. Going into the net is, is suicide for a net runner. Right. But there is a portion right here. Uh, okay, here, right there. It says on the right-hand side of the screen, in the middle, the infamous rabbits yeah. that roam the net are a form of CPP AI, which is one reason why these types are so feared. For the most part, since war's end, the rogues have been in fierce struggle with Netwatch to claim control. Blah, blah, blah. All right, that's not the quote that I was looking for. What I was oh, looking sorry. for... No, <laughs> no, no. I thought... I thought it was because I saw that. But mm -hmm. basically, there's a quote in there that says that AIs are ignored by the rabbits. So if there's an AI in the net, they the rabbits ignore them. You can like freely move through the net. Right. Yeah. Like So if you're one of those net runners that has gone through the soul killer program where it like copies your brain and then kills your body, but it, it copies your brain and then it kills the original, um, then you are an AI now. On the net, yeah. and you can move freely. Exactly, it says it right there. The soul killed pseudo intellect. So your body dies, your consciousness oh, here, is yeah. in is in the net. That's what that is. Yep. So so people like Alt Cunningham in the storyline, she's one of those people, and and it's it's said here like that's probably why the AIs ignore them, right? Because Raish was like, I don't want to hurt my friend Alt, you know, right? And yep. And, and good question in the chat uh, from Consave. I already love where you're going with this. Can you fake being an AI? Hmm. I mean, that sounds like a great campaign idea is trying to come up with yeah. that. The corporations find out that you have that kind of technology. Yeah. They start coming after you, vying for you. Because, you know, I mean, like Raish, like he's the one who built the net, right? And so he knows all the underpinnings. He can do yeah. whatever he wants on the net. And if you're going to fool him, you're going to be good. You're going to be yeah. real good. Cause see, the thing is, the thing architect. is it's left, it's left ambiguous. We don't know if all those rabbits are his consciousness. It's just like a weird copy of him. Like we just don't know, right. but it's assumed that he's one step ahead of everyone because he was when he did this shit. Right. Right. So let's move on to the scary shit, which is the transcendental sentience AIs, the TS AIs right yes, there. Yes. Yes. So these are AIs that just like appeared out of the old net. They were put together, asked to do things. And then like they kind of just came out and were like, hey, we're self-aware. We know that we're AIs. So these are not human beings that became AIs. Right. These are like legit AIs that are AIs in the net, in the old net. Yep. And it says in this little blurb, that with Netwatch and some other organizations, they're like going to this AI like they're an ancient one in Cthulhu mythos and being like, hey, can you help us like undo what's happening in the net? And the AIs are bargaining with them. All right, real quick. My players that are watching this, ignore everything John John just said. Okay, because <laughs> oh, he just, he just like... <laughs> God damn it, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's literally my campaign too. Man. Damn like it! <laughs> Why are you? Because <laughs> in in chapter one of my stuff, twenty twenty, uh, one of the players had a girlfriend who was an AI. Oh, um, dude! One of the one of the players they they rescued someone and a soul killed AI. Like they saw the body die, and they saved her body and put her uh, her consciousness and put it in a cyber deck. Ah. Uh. That's so awesome. she's she's like I don't know where I am, but I guess I'm still somewhere. I don't know what this yeah. is, but oh my god. Anyway, so, so that's so good. So um, all who wander uh, Hong Kong is a ghost town. It's where a lot of AIs do gather. Yes, and that that is mentioned um, kind of throughout this AI section. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and as you can see, it says uh, to allow the old net to be reestablished in some mutually acceptable form. That's what they're, they're brokering some kind of deal with them. Yeah, it says it right there on the left hand side. Yeah, I mean, what the hell is that, dude? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because like, like th this one of the things I love about it is like the old net was big enough and strong enough to support wandering AI, right? Yeah. And so like sometimes they get the question of like, well, how where are these AIs housed now? Like, where's the compute for that? It's like the old net is still there and on. Like nobody's turned it off because. On the old net are all the old secrets, all the old schematics and designs and lost tech and all the, you know, locations where all the good stuff is. And you yeah. don't, you, 
you can't just give up on that, you know? No, <laughs> so like, I mean, no, corporations yeah. have their entire databases of information there. Yep. I mean, we all know in our world today how valuable information is. Yeah. If it wasn't so valuable, they, there wouldn't be so many predatory uh, privacy kind of things going on with, with all the social medias and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. imagine if all these companies that put all their eggs in the, in the information basket lost right. everything. Right. Yeah. Hey, thanks for the follows, guys. You're, you're all awesome. Thank you. Um, but yeah, it's just, I love what they did with the AI. Um, uh, in one of my interludes uh, between chapters two and three, uh, we had uh, Raish make a deal with uh, an Arasaka netrunner because mm. they had stolen something from him from the old net. And he was like, if you give that back to me, you and only you will have safe passage. And, and she was like, Oh, I'm taking that deal. And she went oh, back yeah. out, stole the stuff back, and put it back into Raish's hands. And he was like, okay. Yep. Thank you. Dormammu, I've come to yes. with a bargain. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So this stuff is fun, right? Play with yeah. these things, GMs. These are all wonderful GM tools. And players, like, absolutely, some really great questions in chat about, like, well, hey, can I, can I fake being one? Can I have a relationship yeah. with one? It's like, absolutely, you can have a relationship with one. Netwatch has a relationship. You should have a relationship, too. Yeah. Be careful. <laughs> I know. See, but Be what you're careful. Is, you're saying, can I fake it? It's like, well, can you fake the best net runner of history called Raish Bartmos? Can you, can you fake him and make him think that you're not uh, a human being? Then, yeah, I guess if you want to try and do that, go yeah. for it. But just know all of Netwatch couldn't do it. <laughs> right. But, but you know, games are games are like that, right? That's uh, that could be exactly. part of the fun. That could be part of the. Fun. That's what makes it amazing. Yeah, if yeah. you do. And I think that all of this, and uh, if we have a chance to talk about Ziggurat, uh, is, is another thing, is just Red trying to catch up with our times. So, so Artel Soaring wrote this book, and they wrote 2020, they predicted a bunch of stuff, right. they got some things wrong, sure. and they totally didn't take into account other things that, how would they even know, you know? Yeah. yeah so it was, now it was written in like the 80s and 90s when a lot of the stuff didn't exist. Yeah, so now we talk about AIs, we talk about the internet, we talk about social media, and these kinds of things were not like big parts of the 2020 storyline. Right. And now they're just like, they're moving the ball up to where it's supposed to be, and that's part of it. Yeah, so here, I'll just, folks, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to search for John John real quick. Oh, yeah, Three, 386, or three, 356, I mean. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. yeah, so the garden... Right. I mean, just to look at the garden real quick. Yeah, there you are, baby. Right <laughs> over here on the on the right hand side. So, you know, the garden is obviously a, uh, you know, place where assets are listed for people to consume with a couple of advertisements for like the graph three hauling giraffe situation, which looks so dope. It looks so good. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, John John's there hanging out. There I am. As one of the keywords. <laughs> but you can see just on this site. That this is like them introducing that, hey, we get it. Not everybody's going to jack in to do net stuff. Some people are just going to go to websites. We get yeah, it. Right. Exactly. Um, and I think that a lot of times people who are like into data security are like, oh, I want to be a net runner. And then they read the rules for the net runner. And they're like, what? Yeah. Right. And you have a really good video breaking down net running. Um, and so folks just go and find John John's video about net running and, and, and understand this is a game, right? This was... This was a world inspired by Tron, which inspired oh, no. William, William Gibson's uh, Neuromancer, which inspired a bunch of other stuff. Like, it was all about being on the grid back then, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and, like, fighting stuff with, like, a sword and board. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's just a different assumption about what the net was going to be. And, yeah. uh, and, you know, like, now things are different. Now things are changing. And they're, they're, they're putting that in the game. Yeah. Yeah. The net runners are so cool, man. I mean... The idea of them is they're going to places they're not supposed to be, and there are things there that can kill them, and those things are trying to catch up with the net runners because net runners are getting into things they're not supposed to. Right. So it's like it's a battle of technology versus mankind. Yeah. You know, like who knows? Twenty years in the future, they might have a black ice that's undefeatable. You know, it's it's just like you can't beat it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So so yeah, there's that. Yeah, and uh, chat, good spot, good call out there, all who wander. I so actually, all who wander, you have a, a an interesting point about how like net runners are like fighter pilots. You know, they're kind of like 
really deadly in their chair, ready to roll. Cyberpunk Red, I don't think that's the case anymore. No. Because the Netrunners, they get one special ability, and then maybe Library Search as a skill. But they yeah. really, all their net running chutzpah is tied up in this special ability that has its own growth track. Every mm -hmm. other skill is the same as all the other skills for everything else. So you, you as a net runner, now have to be in person to do your hacking. You can't be in a bathtub, right? Of yeah. Thousands of miles away. You got to be on site, which means you, you got to sneak. You got to stab a guy. You got to be able to mm -hmm. shoot. You got to be able to dive to cover, right? So as a net runner, like I kind of encourage my net runners to think like, when you make this character, don't think about their lives as only being on the net because yeah. their life is getting into trouble, physically into trouble and out of trouble. And in yeah. the middle space there somewhere, they, they do network stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's easy to be a net runner sitting in your home or your basement and going through the net. But once that's gone, the ones that were brave enough to adapt were like, hey, I have to be within six meters of a node to be able to right. hack it. I got to be there. Fuck it. Yeah. I got my pist I got my pistol. I'm not scared. Let's yeah. go. Yeah, my favorite net runners are the ones that are like martial arts experts now or gun experts themselves. You know? They like they like know how to fight and then, you know, secure the node and then use the node. It's like, oh, that's a pretty <laughs> that's a great net runner <laughs> to me, you know? Yeah. Like actually my net runner Black Adder when we did character creation, I looked at his character and I'm like, zero SP head, four SP body armor. And I was like, hey, dude, what are you doing? That's suicide. And he's like, no, that's that's who my my character's not a fighter. I didn't take any fighting skills. I'm just planning on net running. Yeah. And it's like, wait. And, wait. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and I God. said, okay, fine. That's That's what you want to do. Then that's what you want to do. The players are aware of this. And they're like, we got this squishy guy over here. Yep. And as a game master, I made sure I'm, my responsibility is to give the net runner something to do, something yep. important, something that can help the party. And, and that's always been my challenge every session is to give them something to make them powerful while their physical body is not. Yeah. Now, there is yeah. something that Netrunners have traditionally gone into, which was, of course, where is the drone section? I think I'm near it. Yeah. Oh, no, I think this is a story area. Um, um, I honestly do not know where the drone section is. Oh, man. I've heard oh, it here mentioned. It here, it is, here it is. Here it is. Active defenses, air swarm drones, ground drones, large, large air drones. So a lot of times the Netrunner gets tasked with managing drones and it makes sense like you're already kind of a thing i frankly think this is a tech role i frankly think that the techie is going to end up owning the drones because look at all these electronic security tech skills yeah the tech gets a bonus to that kind of stuff um and so like it kind of turns into your techie being the squishy i think because they have well, all these yeah. other skills to chase and there's a lot of reasons for them not chase a milit uh, like a martial skill because they've got so many other disciplines to go after cyber tech and the electronics tech and yeah. all this other stuff going on. Yeah, the techies have the potential to break the game. And it's even said in their role, like in their information, it's like, hey, by the way, we're giving you guys free reign to do whatever you want with this techie. Yeah. But be careful because you could literally break the game if you're not careful. And you don't follow these guidelines that we've set out. And even if you do, you might still break the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No. So. And um, I, I love that about the techs because the techs got such a huge boost over 2020. Yeah. It was like, you get this skilled jury rig where this thing won't break for a couple of combat rounds. Yeah. You're like a glorified handyman, but not, not in red. No. 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 Now, here's the thing to think about. If you have a tech in your crew, GMs, you need to make sure your game has space for downtime. Yeah. Right? Like, some people, they run their crew, and it's like, all right, man, we're accounting for every hour of your existence, or you're, we're accounting for every day of your existence. And some of those tech roles where you're, like, building something or augmenting something, their clocks on that could be a week, I think, on one, on some of the bigger bigger tasks. So you need to make sure that if you have a tech and you want them to have the room to breathe and to create, to invent things into your world, you want to give them that downtime, right? Yeah. Which means the other people need to be doing something too. But like the tech needs to be able to have that, that, 
that latitude to create. Yeah, in my opinion, I think the best way to tackle what the tech can do is you do it in between sessions for like the creation of things and upgrading items because there is a whole like meta game in between sessions already for making money. It's it's in the book for the um, the hustle part as yeah, they call it. Yeah, yeah. So in the book, there's like rules for what happens in between sessions, how you make money, how you pay rent. Yeah. Uh, according to who you are and the techie is part of that too yeah if y'all don't know like cyberpunk you pay rent you don't like yeah. you don't just like have adventures <laughs> like no you've got if you don't want to be homeless you got to pay rent you got to pay for yeah. food you know like your lifestyle does come with some kind of cost and you can pay for that cost as you know a bodyguard for hire as a techie repairing stuff you know whatever but then you get your edge run Right, mm -hmm. where you and your buddies are going to go out and make a big score, and then you kind of describe well between scores, I do these things. Yeah, to stay, exactly to stay afloat. Yeah, yeah, and and straight out of James Hut Hut's mouth, he yeah. told me I made. He's like I made this economy, and yeah. I made sure that you will not be able to avoid paying rent. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> he said that. Yes, yeah. Even if you're even if you're in a cardboard box in an alley, there's a guy with a knife who wants that box. And you yeah, got to yeah. pay something for him to not stab you while you sleep. <laughs> and there, there is no forgiveness, a late penalty. No, you're on the streets or you're dead or yeah. your liver has gone or, yeah. or something, yeah. dude. Yeah, it's like, don't worry. About it. Yeah, if your landlord says, don't worry about it, you need to start worrying about it. Because <laughs> that means he's already sold half your organs. <laughs> he's just, yeah. He's just coming for him. And I just want to like recommend to you guys, as soon as you get the Red Core rulebook, when you get to the techie part, read it very carefully yeah. because literally there is a, it's a blueprint to make any item in the game, upgrade any item in the game. You want a flamethrower guitar? You can do it. Yep. You want, you want a grenade launcher on top of your bicycle? You can do it. Like whatever you want to do, it gives you the, the ability to do anything. Yeah. And it's one of those things where, um, uh, you mentioned that it can be pretty powerful, uh, and that's true. Right. So like this is one of those things that like as a tech, you want to work with your GM, right? You got to figure out like, OK, I want to make this thing that's really powerful. And then as a GM is like, OK, well, what happens when an exec sees that thing wandering the street? And like, yeah, cool. I'm going to copy that. Yeah. Right. So as a tech, you're like, I want to make this powerful thing. It's like then consider who steals that from you. Just the idea of it. Right. Yeah. So like there's all these games you can play just on like your mad scientist player making something and the GM's going, Yes, 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 that thing's very powerful. And now this guy has thirty copies of it. <laughs> yeah, and exactly. it's coming back at you. It's like, oh no, what do I do? Yeah. And I mean, even lore wise, they're so important the techies yeah. because in the time of the red, things are hard to come by. Just anything, whatever, food, guns, shelter, yeah. all the stuff are is hard to come by. So if you have some guy that's like in making the things that people can't get, that brings a lot of attention to you guys, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and interesting comments in chat about uh, med techs being able to remove organs and cyberware. Totally true. Techs yeah. are there to augment the cyberware, right? Make those changes. Like all the, oh, we, I had talked about this in, in my deal about the guns being rather kind of boilerplate. Techs, of course, can augment the guns. Yeah. Right. Like you want to add some crazy stuff to your guns, get a tech, pay him some money. Yeah. And he throws some resources into it, some time into it. And now your gun does whatever else, right? Yeah. Whatever yeah, like, so custom thing you want. You want, like, let's say you have a rate of fire one weapon. He can make it a rate of fire two weapon. He can give you a plus two to hit. He can make the a, a longer magazine capacity. Right. You can do anything, anything you want. Right. As long as you have the money and the materials. Right. Yeah. If you want like all those like, rails doing all this crazy stuff on it get a tech and the tech will make yeah. all that happen for you um yeah yeah uh, uh should we field some questions from chat if you guys have any questions go ahead and shoot it at us and we'll be more than happy to answer them we are getting close to an hour aren't we we are pretty close to an hour yeah we've been going um i know just <laughs> excited as we, as we are um, it flew man <laughs> yeah yeah what's your time like do you need to go at an hour uh i can do a little bit past Okay, I don't want to get you in trouble. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, no, no. We're That's we're fine. both we're both dads, folks. So like, we, we we can only go so long. <laughs> yeah, I think I do like fifteen minutes after. Yeah, what's up, one quit? Yeah. Welcome, welcome to the show, dude. Um, so yeah, let's do a couple of questions. We've gone through a few of the roles and talked about some of our just 
like we've just been gushing about the game honestly um mm -hmm. okay cool uh luminous saber hypothetically if you were to make a character an ai soul killed or tr uh transcendence how would you set it up so um the way i would set that up frankly is to first pick where they live do they live on mm -hmm. one of the city nets or do they live in old net right so first off you kind of you have to figure out where they are or do um, they live on a hard drive yeah do they live on a hard drive some some dude's deck right um yeah. and that's all doable right that's all possible um and then what i would do after that like as a player you have to kind of figure out like do i interact with the physical world and take on like a traditional role or am I doing like the Netrunner thing or something else along those lines? You have to kind of figure out what your deal is. But absolutely, I think that there is a lot of room in here for a player to say, I want to be an AI. And here's the constraints. Here's the things. Like maybe I'm a solo AI and I in inhabit some little drone. Yeah. Right. That has the cyber deck tucked up into its belly. And I have all the cool solo stuff, but I'm an AI. A yeah, or robot. or a robot in a big robot, like a combat robot yeah, or something, yeah. like a prototype one that you put your consciousness in. Yeah. Or maybe you're literally just in a hard drive, and the one of the players walks around with you, and you're the you're the party's net runner. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm gonna go to the cybernetic section. Oh, that's follow the towers. We don't want that. I'm looking for Borg. Um. So there was a question in here from Dritz about. Um, how would you convert 2020 Borgs into red? Right? Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, so let me get down to the Borg stuff. Um, yeah, they're they're lightly mentioned. They are I lightly think... mentioned. Here's, nope, several legs. Sorry, to just scroll through. Borgware, uh, 116. 116. Um, but oh, that's... I, I, think but... I, I think I just passed it. Oh, Borgware, there it is. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. In 2020, you could buy individual Borg pieces. And if anybody doesn't know, if you get like a Borg torso, all your organs are gone. It's all cybernetics mm -hmm. at that point. And so the lung function, the heart function, the organ function, that's all being replaced by machines. Um, and you could part together a Borg if you wanted to. The humanity loss on that was like gigantic. It was huge, right? Yeah. And then in the Chromebooks, they came out with full body conversions the the alpha the there's a couple other full body conversions out there yeah where it's just like and, your brain goes into the brain pan up in the up in the skull of the cyborg or in the belly yeah i saw plenty of those like plenty of my players like nope my brain's in the belly where i got layers of armor <laughs> yeah and and the uh argument was like the reason why you're not cyber psycho is because you accepted the fact that you're a machine there is no like am i a man or a machine right you're like no i'm accepting the fact that i am no uh, this i've evolved to this yeah and and cyber psychos are people that are like they are battling with the idea in their head it's like a psychosomatic kind of thing yeah yeah. And uh, so there's some good call outs in chat about therapy. The med mm. tech can be therapy for. Yeah. So if you have a Borg on your team, get a med tech to help them. Um, there is some permanent humanity loss, right? No matter what, if you if you start doing all these things. Um, the way let's see here. I think the way that 2020 did the full body conversion is they basically took all of the like fixed humanity costs spend and then. Instead of doing all the die rolls, they just said, all right, we're going to take the fixed values, done, and then we're going to do one 2d6 or 4d6 die roll. Yeah. And that's the full body conversions. Like, you spend a bunch of, like, got to spend humanity loss, and then you do, like, one die roll that kind of encompasses all this other stuff. Instead of doing it piece by piece, you do it all at once. Um, and that's how they kind of made the full body conversions work. And then also therapy, right? Um, and so I would consider as a gm this is gms you got to think here right like how do you want to do this um i would consider doing something similar where one they have to go through therapy right and two go ahead and take on all the permanent humanity loss for borg stuff because there's a bunch that you yeah. lose just off the off the top of humanity you lose all that and then consolidate the die roll into like one or two 46 rolls right yeah um, that way, you're not guaranteed to be cyber, cyber psycho. You should be close, right? Yeah. 
for not, some people they will be cyber psycho right for some know? they will be cyber psycho because they're unlucky yeah <laughs> right you know, yeah much. i mean 46 a lot of dice is a big know. number um so that's kind of how i would do it is try and make a way for it to fit so that's not you're not paying for each part individually because uh, yeah. i think even with therapy paying for each part individually with humanity like you might still end up cyber psycho um or you could um, i haven't actually done the math on it yet um, yeah and and there's actually a really cool section of the book on page 231 called mental trauma yes and that's the other you, way you lose humanity of course trauma dude, you can you can lose humanity from traumatic experiences long-term mental stress long-term and, and there's there's a chart there that tells you like examples and how much you would lose yep so this adds a whole new layer of humanity loss to your game where if something like crazy happened and the players have witnessed it they might all start lose the you lose humanity right there yeah yeah you know um Okay, so I want to get to a couple more questions. Um, uh, Dicks of Hazard, great name. Um, awesome. <laughs> uh, you ask if there's drugs in Cyberpunk Red. Yes, there are drugs in Cyberpunk Red. There are useful drugs uh, mentioned, primarily useful drugs like stims, fast heal, um, uh, what is it, antibiotics, and a couple other things that are mentioned. Yeah. Um, but so as far as like street drugs go, they are in the game. Yep. Like synth coke, black lace, and so it's actually like right above the Borg stuff that we were looking at. Oh, um, and in my opinion, I I had an issue with it in 2020, how it was so severe and extreme, and I think Dicks of Hazard said that as well. Yeah. So it's up to you. I mean, to do it the way you want, but being able to get addicted to a drug on your first dose is kind of like it's a little bit out there for me, to right. be honest with you. Yeah, and I think that there's um, honestly, like some GMs are gonna be like, yeah, that's what the whatever whatever drug review board says. That's how it is in my game, right? And it's like yeah. other guys like, dude, I've done that stuff, and no, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So like, I I think that you as the player GM, you need to kind of navigate those waters. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. um, the like our Talsorian is not telling us a lot here on that yeah. front. I don't think. No, and I think it's okay for them to take this stance. Like, I'm not trying to glorify drugs or anything like that. I am I'm aware uh, firsthand of how terrible they can be. I've seen it and all that. Sure. But um, a DV15, if you fail that, you're addicted. I think it's a little severe. So maybe I'll make it a DV10. I should say that what that he's talking about there, that's the resist drug and toxins skill. So there's actually yeah. a skill at not getting addicted. Exactly. So if you're yeah. if your character is like, hey, I'm the solo, and my solo takes stims to be better in combat, well, get that get that resist toxins um, skill up, right? So you can hit those DCs, and then talk to your DM about changing the the difficulty values. Uh, how about that question from Con Save? Do you have any downtime tips for rocker boys other than playing bars or street corners? Yeah. Um, so rocker boys need to have some kind of purpose, right? Nobody listens to your music if you're just in it for the cash. Yeah. Right. So you need to get involved. You need to have some kind of cause that you go after. Right. Um, and it could be just like your friends and like what they're going through, or it could be like, I don't know, some big political thing or some big uh, poverty thing or whatever. They just pick something that your rocker boy cares about and make sure that he does care about it, that he does get into it. Because otherwise, if you're just in it for the cash, then there's I, I, don't, I think you're missing a big story opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, and think about what rocker boys do in our world. It's not just playing music or recording music. They do book deals. They do interviews. They're in movies. They're on podcasts. So your rocker boy is is a beacon of hope for people. There's somebody that they look up to. So they have to make appearances somehow, some way, whether it's through the city net and ziggurat using their apps and stuff like that, or if it's literally just being in the place that they need to be. Yep. 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 Yeah. Um, yeah, and I love, I love all the chat about the, the drug situation here. You know, it's funny, in our Chapter 1 game, Dr. Vice, he was a pharmacist. And in the old 2020 rules, you could, like, spend a bunch of money and time to make it so that all the um, negative effects were gone out of a drug. You know, like, the drug manufacturer rules, if you, like, really put in the time and effort, could be 
pretty i mean you can make potent stuff without a lot of drawbacks um, yeah and you know i think that uh, i would maybe go back to that and and crib some of that stuff into into red because they didn't yeah. they didn't put it in, into red yeah, my only argument is if a drug is so addicting or the chance of it to be is that addicting that people just wouldn't like regular people wouldn't take it. They wouldn't party with it. It's right. Right. it's no longer a party drug. It's now like a hardcore drug, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um let's see here. Quick question. Any chance this will be a video? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh Butt Liquor 299. <laughs> yes. I love it, dude. Dicks of Hazard, <laughs> Butt Liquor 299. You're... No worries. This will be on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that mature question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll be on both of our YouTube channels. It'll yeah. be on the Twitch VOD immediately. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Any other questions? I want to give us, like, do, do you have, like, another five minutes or so? Or do we need yeah, to? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. No, no, no. Let's do it. Yeah, cool. Um. I'm going to kind of filter up real quick just to make sure. Um, uh, so there was a comment about brain dance from All Who Wander about brain dance. Brain dance is, of course, still a thing in the time of the red. There's actually like cybernetics yeah. in here that'll let you do brain dance recordings. And that's another side gig for any edge runner. Because you got to think there are beavers out there, like just normal people out there that are like, I want to live like a like an edge runner for an hour and just like have that high octane life. Like one of you should be recording your shit for <laughs> for edge running, you know, for for the brain dance. Right. Like that's yeah. a, that's a whole side gig you could get a lot of money on. Yeah, that's a great idea. Like a rocker boy could be like, hey, you might like my music, but check this out when i'm fighting arasaka's security forces look at this brain dance that you can be a part of yeah and, yeah. and be in my shoes you know right exactly exactly yeah um uh dritz any plans for future shows and uh ap's actual plays uh always oh. dude yeah yeah always um so we're in chapter three for our game that is the last chapter for the nomad family um we have we're already working on the next game honestly yeah um so yes 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 uh, and yeah. and I'll be doing a like a, a GM tips series. Of, I'm like working on that right now. I've got it all mapped out. Um, so I'll be doing a little like quick hit videos on how to run games in sci-fi slash cyberpunk is what I'm going to be focusing on. So it won't be really necessarily on the rules. It'll be on like how to go from being a player to being a GM. Yeah, nice. I love. I can't wait for that. I love seeing stuff like that. Yeah, man. Yeah, for me, I mean, our Wise Guys arc, story arc, current arc is about to end. And my problem is there's so many things I want to do. Like, I want to play a game with Baby Beard Media. I'm working with the yes. Roll to Cast people to play a game with them, to yeah. run one for them. And uh, I want to do Cyberpunk on the spot again, where the public can play in my games. I did that before. And, you know, there's just so many things. Videos. Yeah. Working with David, doing yes. this kind of thing. Yes. I really want to be collaborating more. Um, that's my one big thing is like HSG had been like its own little bubble for so long. We were doing the West Marches thing, which buried me in, in work. Um, and West Marches was a lot of fun, but it was really a lot of effort, right? Um, so yeah, I really it want is to, a lot of effort. I really want to start collaborating more with with more of these teams. And, and you know, have you on mine, on in my game, you know, I'd love to be in your game as like a guest bot or something like that. And just do that kind of fun stuff, you know? Um, I think SIN is is out of Cyberpunk Red because I have not seen it at all. I haven't right. even seen it mentioned yeah. in in the Red Core rulebook. So I'm not sure if what I think what they assumed is because everything collapsed that that whole system is gone and the net collapsed. Everyone's SIN number was in the net on yeah. a system. So with the net collapsing and all that going to shit. I think the idea is that we can't verify who has an SIN and who doesn't. Maybe. So now it's, just, and because we need nomads for our civilizations to continue, it's kind of a slap in their face to be like, oh, dude, what about SINs? You know, because they were, they were zeros as they were called in the lore. Yeah. I wonder if like, there's got to be some pocket out there that is doing it, right? Like I'm, I'd almost wager that like the Republic of Texas as a Texan, right? As a Texan, I yeah. know that Texas is going to be its own thing, right? And yeah. I can almost see that, like, they would have some sort of, like, cowboy law that kind of went martial law a little bit, 
And so maybe they have sins. So like, I think that you could, if you want sins in your world, you can certainly place them, right? Because the technology exists. It's just been destroyed by race. The the normal practice of it has been destroyed by race. So I, yeah. I think that you could, you could still seed it in there. Um, yeah, it, it might still be in like Night City because they said in the lore that there are yeah. city states. Like Night City is its own thing outside of the free state of Northern California. Yeah. So so th- I'm sure that can happen too. Oh, yeah. So Jago's and DTP. Uh, yeah, Sacramento, CA, California, my game, absolutely has sins. Uh, they are an authoritarian state. They are awful. You don't want to live in Sacramento in my game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah see, there's room for you to do stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Are we, uh, let's see, I want to give All Who Wander, Night City Chronicle organized play comeback. So there's a question in there about, from All Who Wander, about the organized play crew doing their games again. I'm sure they're going to pick it back up. I think they had to go on hiatus because of some kind of, like, personal thing. Hmm. Um, but I, I mean, there's a, there's a bunch of people out there who want it. And yeah. I, I hope that they can organize that again. Um, I, I, yeah, I maybe maybe know. red will get them back together yeah yeah so yeah you're right organizer got ill yeah and so i i hope that they do it again i haven't heard of anybody who's gonna like pick up the mantle but it would be really cool for there to be a semi-official organized play um, yeah yeah i got to play with them a couple of times at gen con and their scenarios were fun man i mean they were like start in night city go to uh, Indianapolis, which is where oh, Gen- wow. which is where Gen Con is, um, oh, yeah. <laughs> and it was uh, it's a really it's a it's a really good get good gig. Um, there's yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of um, room for us as a community to make a living world. There really yeah. is. Um, it takes like with the West Marchers game, I st- I started doing some of that, and it really takes a lot. It takes a whole lot. So I feel like you'd almost have to collaborate with two or three people. To make it work, yeah. and yeah, make it sustainable. Sounds like it. Yeah, gotta have the passion and the time. Yeah. Um. <laughs> um well, okay. I don't want to take too much more of your time, John. John, um, can I show off the character sheet real quick? Yeah, yeah. Please do, and then we'll end it on that. No problem. Okay, cool. So, folks, um, High Shelf Gaming has been behind the scenes making a Roll Twenty character sheet. What I have for you tonight is like sheet zero. Okay, it is a totally functioning character sheet. It has the skills and the stats and all that kind of stuff. It's got all the skills for Cyberpunk Red in there and all those good things. Um, it does not have any of the special stuff for the special abilities because that's a whole big thing to worry about. We are making a new sheet already. Uh, we are building it from the ground up. This sheet that we have, I'll just go into my game real quick. Um, this sheet that we have is... Um, is already in Roll20. The way to get access to it, though, is you have to, one, have a Roll20 Pro account because what I have to deliver you today is the code that you would put into your game. Um, And I'll just pick on uh, (laughs) Mono here. This character sheet has um, stats. It does the hit point calculation correctly with the new hit point rules in Cyberpunk Red because they changed it from Jumpstart Kick to Red. Yeah. Uh, helps you track your humanity, your experience points that you're getting, um, and then all of the skills are represented. And they're currently organized the same way that they are organized in the book. Okay, so like body skills and social skills and, and all of that kind of stuff. And if you wanted to roll one, I'll just put it over here, um, you know, roll endurance, and then I don't know if it shows up. Yeah, it'll show up. Uh, it'll say, hey, um, Critical failure, subtract eight from the roll that shows up here. So it does all the crit success, crit fails, all that stuff is in there. Um, Sweet. Yeah, so all of this stuff is is there. Here's how you get to it, and here's how you use it. Um, so I have a GitHub. I'm going to toss this link here in the chat. And anybody watching this on YouTube, the link is in the show notes. Um, uh, da, da, da. let me go back to the, go back to this here. Um, actually here, let me link straight to the project, not to the, not to the readme. Um, so in the project, there are two files you need. There's an HTML block and there's an XML block or sorry, a CSS, uh, style sheet. 
Um, so download these two files out of out of GitHub, and then you're gonna make a new game. I'm gonna exit out of this. You're How gonna... do you download? You just right click save as. Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right click save save link as. Save link as. Okay. Yep. Got it. Yep. Um, and then in roll twenty, before you launch your game, you go to settings game settings and i know i'm doing like instruction on the stream and that's kind of wild um go to settings no, game that's settings. Good because because you could pause and go back from the vod so it's yeah. fine do it yeah. so then you scroll down character sheet template is going to be custom and you're going to copy and paste the html into the html tab and the css into the css tab and mm. that's how this character sheet gets built into your game be careful if you already have a game in rule 20 don't use that game. Make a new one. Because this character sheet has custom values and all this kind of stuff. If you have stats on some sheet or something like that, the stats from that sheet will not move into this sheet. This has to be a new game set to custom, and then you can bring this stuff in. And, and at least today, you can have a Roll20 game with a Cyberpunk Red character sheet. Um, again, this is sheet zero. It is basic functionality. Um, we really, really like this. Um, we are making another sheet that we will submit to Roll20 for approval. And once it's approved by Roll20, instead of selecting custom, you would just scroll down and find Cyberpunk Red in the pulldown yeah. and just boom, that's the sheet that we made, right? Yeah. And I know this community is amazing and there's lots of people making character sheets and that's awesome. Frankly, because we had early access to the book, we said, I know, let's make a character sheet. So that as soon as possible, there is something in Roll20 that people can play with, right? Yep. Um, and so that is that is the gig. Um, and all who wonder, you're talking about Foundry. Uh, Foundry, there's a guy making, already making, a thing for Cyberpunk Red and Foundry. Um, yeah. So like, if you're on the Foundry train, stay on the Foundry train. He will feed you stuff when he can. But if you're yeah. in Roll20 and you have Roll20 Pro, grab our... HTML code and style sheet out of our GitHub and use it, right? And we'll be doing updates to the next sheet. This sheet as it is right now is is sold for free as is. Mm -hmm. We're not going to make any changes to this. This sheet is is as is, right? With better sheets coming kind of thing with more features and all that kind of stuff. It's awesome, man. Thanks for doing that. Seriously. Yeah. I am so glad. We got to do this. Um, yeah. th this really was Katrina in our community. She did this. Um, there was a sheet already existing that we frankly cribbed and then made a bunch of changes to to make it work. Um, yeah. That's all detailed here in the readme file if you want to go back and look at the original projects and all that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, we are really happy to have gotten that done. I, you know, I, I hope that this is helpful to you all. I hope that it's useful. If not, I, I get it. Right. If this is not the right sheet for you, I'm, you know, sorry. <laughs> it's, it's okay. No, no, no hurt feelings here. I just wanted to give something to the community and let you all do your thing. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. And we love this community and we're so grateful for all of you. We're grateful for you guys tuning in yeah. and being a part of it. David and I will be doing stuff like this again in the future. So if this is the kind of stuff you like, make sure you follow, you subscribe, you like, you do all the things you can yep. to support High Shelf Gaming and to sh support my channel as well so that we can continue doing the things that you love. That is awesome. Um, all who wander on sending money. John, John, do you have a Patreon? I do not, but I may get into that business soon. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same way. Um, I want to at some point do a Patreon. I think I think we're probably pretty close to maybe it's time to start go ahead go ahead and start doing yeah this yeah um, i think so too Pe yeah. people are at, i i said when people start asking that's yeah. when i'll start doing it and right. it's happening so yeah yeah so uh, thank you all all who wonder for asking that is a fantastic question on on your part i, I really appreciate that john john and i are going to work on that for our respective yeah. projects <laughs> Our next project is taking your money. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, everybody, thanks a ton for tuning in. You've all been great. If you're watching this on YouTube, thanks a ton for watching. Um, 
you've all been fantastic. Of course, join the Discord. It's linked down below. Um, it's linked in the chat a couple of times in the in the um, in the uh, Twitch side. You know, join the creators, join the GMs, right? Like we're all trying to boost each other and help each other. It's a really fun, friendly community. And normally we focus only on community, but today we just couldn't help ourselves. We had to talk about red, right? Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, and and if you guys are content creators, like the con save, you guys should be following the con save. Yeah. They're in chat. They're also doing amazing things. Yeah. If you guys are creators out there that want some advice, want some help, the Discord is there for you. Literally, that's yeah. what we created it for. We'll help you. We'll support you. Yep. And we're honestly just fans ourselves. So we love seeing that stuff. Yeah, we're fans with extra time. That's yeah. why we're doing this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> And chutzpah, as they say. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, everybody at home, thanks again for tuning in. Um, we are going to sign out. So, uh, again, I'm David, High Shelf Gaming, John John the Wise. We're all, we're from, all... from John John the Wise. <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> um, everybody, have fun and play well. Bye, guys.